The seahorse is one of the most curious looking animals on the planet. Though it has a head like a horse, eyes like a lizard, a tail like a possum, and can swim like a submarine, the seahorse is considered a fish. Scientists put the seahorse in the pipefish sea dragon family and refer to it as hippocampus, a name derived from two Greek words, hippa meaning horse and campus meaning sea creature. Most fish swim horizontally by moving their bodies back and forth from side to side, somewhat like a snake wriggles. Seahorses, on the other hand, are upright and swim vertically like a submarine that can go up and down. A seahorse has one fin on its back and one on each side of its neck that help to propel it. But what helps maintain its balance as it goes up and down in the water is the gas within its swim bladder. Like a well-designed submarine that manipulates gas in order to submerge and resurface while remaining parallel to the water, the seahorse can alternate the amount of gas in its bladder to do the same. The life of the seahorse is dependent on a perfectly designed bladder. With a damaged bladder or without a bladder altogether, a seahorse would sink to the ocean floor and die. How can evolutionists logically explain the evolution of the swim bladder if seahorses have always needed them to survive? If they have always needed them, then they must have always had them, else there would be no seahorses. But there are seahorses, and small though they be, they stand as powerful witnesses for the Creator. The tail of the seahorse is wonderfully designed. As with the possum and certain monkeys, God gave the seahorse a prehensile tail, which can wrap around and hold things. Seahorses use their tails to wrap around seaweed and anchor themselves so that fast-moving water currents do not carry the rather slow-moving seahorses far away from their homes. We all know that female dogs have puppies. Female cats have kittens. Women, not men, naturally become pregnant and carry and deliver babies. With seahorses, however, things are a little or a lot different. Seahorses are the only known animals in which the males actually get pregnant, carry the babies, and give birth. God designed the male seahorse with a special kangaroo-like pouch near its belly. At just the right time during the courtship, the female seahorse deposits hundreds of eggs into the pouch of the male where he fertilizes them. For the next few weeks, the male seahorse carries the unborn seahorses before squirting the fully formed babies out of the pouch. If nothing like this process is known in the animal kingdom, why would anyone think that evolution can logically explain it? How do undirected time and chance stumble across a different and better way for a particular kind of fish to have babies? How can purely naturalistic evolutionary theory adequately explain how the first male seahorse became anatomically and physiologically capable of getting pregnant, carrying babies, and giving birth? Suffice it to say, Seahorses are as baffling to the theory of evolution as duck-billed platypuses are. The unusual seahorse cries out for a creative creator who cannot be contained in the naturalistic box of evolution. As the patriarch Job asked, Who does not know that the hand of the Lord has done this, and whose hand is the life of every living thing? Ask the beast, and they will teach you, and the fish of the sea will will explain to you. If you'd like to learn more about God and His amazing creation, be sure to visit us at apologeticspress.org.